SFL. This is Tessa, hashtag evil twin on Instagram. Why aren't you following me? God, I'm so lonely. I'm Trisha, and I need external validation. All of it. Hashtag broken. Uh, but I love this almond milk latte. Hashtag glass. <laughs> Guys, you saw the best movie. I'm so excited to talk about this. Uh, I love this movie. I love a little indie indie gym. Mm-hmm. Um, and this one is Ingrid Goes West, starring Aubrey Plaza. And Elizabeth Olsen. Yeah, who I'm trying so hard to stop calling the other Olsen because she is a phenomenal actress in herself, but it is a running joke that I have with myself to call her the other Olsen. And she's the best Olsen, probably the most talented acting Olsen Well, the other two me. don't act. And I no. think that there's two more Olsons who we haven't heard from yet in terms yeah, of they, Hollywood. They don't matter. Hashtag petty. Hashtag yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag I know. Hashtag. <laughs> so Ingrid Goes West and yes. Aubrey Plaza. Yes. So we're continuing our, <sighs> our little walkabout of Manic Pixie Dream Girls. And this is kind of not on any of the lists for being a Manic Pixie Dream Girl. But and I'm not even positive she is one, but she is Manic. And she has a pixie quality. I'd love to hear your my, reasoning my and, takes on this. and logic behind her being um, a manic pixie dream girl. Because there's a lot of internal. I don't think she is. Going on. I okay. think Elizabeth Olsen is um, the manic pixie dream girl. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Two Got Ingrid's it. straight up crazy. Now I feel uh, who like I appreciate that. so much yeah. because I, I I mean I, I just loved it. I loved every second of this movie. I like every time I started watching this, like ten minutes in, I'm like the awkwardness is built so much that I had to like walk away. Yeah. And I was like, I know what's going to happen. I've seen the movie once before, but I'm like, I just know it's like we're ticking up the roller coaster in levels of crazy. And I'm like, she pepper sprayed a woman in the face within the first ten minutes. First <laughs> scene almost. First two scenes. Yeah. And she's in this she has this brown smock on as she goes to do it like sort of like how we explained the evil witch and like beauty and the beast it was just That's like it. showing up not bringing anything wow except to a danger and mace yeah and so i <laughs> had forgotten i'd seen this years ago i'd forgotten that it started with her doing that to a girl she didn't know in my head i was thinking they were friends no, you know I think like they, you're, I think they were friends she was another instagram person she had never even met oh because well, she knew her name, so I was like, oh, it's the same scenario. Repeating it same itself. exact scenario. Uh, and she wasn't invited to that goddamn wedding. Yeah. I, I have love. so many feelings about this. We had to bring out our feelings wheels so I could accurately explain the emotions that went through my head during the viewing of this film. And I'm very much in the uh, surprised and confused and a little disgusted uh, colors of the wheel right now. And I'm like, okay. she's going to murder someone. Uh, originally, my first time I saw this, I was like, this ends in a tragedy. It seems uh, like a murderous I rage. wasn't wrong. <laughs> there is a tragedy. <laughs> yeah. But we were really ticking off that roller coaster fast, and I'm like, oh no. What's the, the baseline plot? Um, so following the death of her mother and a series of self-inflicted setbacks, young Ingrid Thorburn escapes a humdrum existence by moving out west to befriend her Instagram obsession, an L.A. socialite named Taylor Sloan. After a quick bond is forged between these two unlikely buddies, the facade begins to crack in both the women's lives with a comically malicious result. Loved it! Awesome. Loved it. So, I loved it. And, yeah, I picked this for our Manic Pixie Dream Girl series because I do think that Elizabeth Olsen is a Manic Pixie Dream Girl in the same way that Summer is in 500 Days of Summer where she's telling you, or it it becomes more and more leaked that she's actually not a manic pixie dream girl everything that's shown on instagram isn't real Mm -hmm. but it's not anything that um aubrey plaza ingrid takes in she's like you're my perfect best friend Mm -hmm. you've got a perfect life i want to do everything you're doing so that i can feel closer to you and like more fulfilled like a man would yeah in those other um manic pixie dream films so i was like yes i and i really wanted to see like what happens when um you kind of take the romantic aspect out of it and you just have like a manic pixie dream girl kind of set loose Mm -hmm. uh or i guess i guess this is more an interesting take on the person who seeks a manic pixie dream girl kind of that like depressed um sullen person who's just like if only i could attain the manic pixie dream girl then i would be more complete they're gonna grow me up and like make me uh, a more complete person which doesn't happen in any of those films and it also doesn't happen in this one no uh which is something that i also love what did you think Yeah, now that you said it, Elizabeth Olsen's character, Taylor Sloan, is definitely the manic pixie dream girl. I got completely confused while watching it because I thought, manic, Aubrey. Yeah. (laughs) 
because she's entirely <laughs> manic in yeah. this movie. But yeah, there's nothing to Taylor Sloan based on the perception of Ingrid and also just our perception of social media influencers Mm -hmm. in general. It's kind of a modern manic pixie. Um, It's very, you know, there's clearly more or hopefully more to a lot of the social media influencers. And it's interesting because they are in part creating their status as Manic Pixie Dream Girls in addition to being viewed as that by yeah. whoever's following them. And so... Until they crash and burn and, the, and then all of a sudden the Manic Pixie, like, you know, shows her true form. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's a broken person seeking validation but through it's our eyes as we were seeking it through theirs. And sure. I was like, I love this movie. So this is how the story goes in my own head. Ingrid's mom dies. Ingrid in her, like, lonely and despair having, like, come to the realization that she truly is alone in the world finds an instagram that she really likes which is some random girl uh and the girl likes her photo and then ingrid's like oh my god now we're best friends she thinks like friending someone online is the same as friending someone mm-hmm. irl she is rebuffed by that girl because she's not her friend in, in real life doesn't handle rejection well goes to her wedding maces her in the face winds up in a sale asylum boom into first act <laughs> <laughs> yeah it definitely could have happened that way. It wasn't clear chronological order to me, but at the same time, I I agree that the inciting incident was most likely her mom's death. I do wish that we didn't need it. I mean, the the movie was written beautifully, Mm -hmm. um, but for me to really hang on to that as the inciting incident, it would have been nice to see something or even a picture of the mom, but then, Mm -hmm. all right, so she maces someone, they weren't friends, they're certainly not friends afterwards, and then she keys a mom-mobile, and then she she, she, she keys some (laughs) bitch's car, she hears, over here's talking about her, and then she heads to California, and I do envy that impulsiveness in terms of leaving not for elizabeth olsen's character but just having cash and being like fuck this i'm going somewhere i just don't know if i could do it i did it you could do it i mean i've never had 60k in well i did it with no k (laughs) just go but i mean within a matter of it they made it seem like it was a matter of days yeah i did it in three weeks good job yeah yeah i moved from chicago to seattle but i had like a friend in that house um, so you made the decision. Yeah. She's like, my roommate like kind of fell out. The situation like didn't work out. And then she's getting all these crisis from me. And she's like, do you want to come to the house? You don't like your job. And I was like, you're right. I don't like my job. I'm going to come. I'm going to do it. Nice. So I did. <laughs> well, then you definitely have no excuse to go eat, pray, love. Like we have been talking about. Because you have it in you. Oh, well, I just, I'm much older now. And I need to grow. Yeah. Ugh. God, I wish again. I wish I wish I had a little bit of Ingrid in me, in that um, to be like, extremely present in my life and not to be so worried about the future. Like when I was like twenty three, when I was just up and moved, I, I was twenty four. Uh, that was super easy. It was like everything is so so far away. Mm-hmm. Um, like I wasn't getting married anytime soon. I was mm-hmm. like, completely single. As I mean, some things don't change, but like whatever. It kind of makes me think like. <laughs> Mental illness, in a way, for some people, if there is, it almost seems like if there is a bit of delusion aspect to it, the more present that person is, mm-hmm. and they are truly just living the minute life minute, that yeah. is in front of them, minute to minute, and making these decisions like crazy ex girlfriend. Yeah. No care about money, doesn't even know, hasn't looked at her bank account the entire time she's been in West Covina. Mm-hmm. Welcome to me. I'll yeah. get a talk show. I've got all this money. And it just, it's like, do we ever, does an ordinary person ever get to truly live? <laughs> well, I think that having some perspective is healthy. Um, Ingrid's barely putting one foot in front of the other. Like, at the end, she's buying a house in Joshua Tree, yeah. using uh, pages from a book as toilet paper, yeah. and, like, bartering for... But she has a house in Joshua Tree. I mean, (laughs) hashtag Jay Tree. Like, is she really not doing things right? But I think it, that's the problem though. So you can live, you get a full sense of presence and you're living like that. But then the highs are so high and the lows are so low because inevitably in order to live a somewhat stable existence, there has to be an element of planning. 
Mm -hmm. So it's like you can't have both, but it's kind of amazing to have nothing to lose and just to to do that. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, we all die anyway, so you don't bring any of the money with you. Like, yeah. So it just is kind of, it's an interesting, maybe it's a gift in some aspects, even though, you know, with the happiness comes the darkness. Because she has a lot of highs. Yeah. She probably felt higher than any of us will ever feel in our lives and lower than either of us can feel. And then is it worth it? And then is it, so do you trade that for some inner peace? Although, to be honest. Do you change, do you trade mountains for molehills? And I think most of us choose molehills. Right. And it'd be nice to be able to have some mountains and some molehills. Yeah. So she follows Elizabeth Olsen. Yeah. Well, just to go back to your um, mountains thing. uh, Yours, I said it. (laughs) Remember when you... But I think in order to have mountains, like, you have to be, yeah, I think you have to be okay with, like, a degree of recklessness. Or, I guess, like, to be um, less aware that there are consequences to your actions. I mean, I believe in what comes up must come down. So the higher you are, the lower the fall is. Um, and so everything, there's its, there's its opposite, sadness, happiness. You know, like, for every happy moment, you experience there is the inevitable sadness that that moment is gone then when it goes away so it's just kind of a it, yeah. are you are you ready to take the lows yeah if you get the highs and they don't really make that decision though yeah. yeah but I think that that describes the molehills like little like like weddings that's a big happy and then eventually like you know planning a wedding is excited and then immediately following it it's like okay yeah (laughs) and like you know like I'm never well hopefully you'll never have to have another wedding um would be a low but I think for Ingrid like hers is I'm gonna steal a dog yeah and then when people eventually find out that she's gone to such lengths like that low I think for most people I'm like and we get Ingrid's uh decision making towards the end is to attempt suicide sure uh and I was like I think yeah that low is it's scary. Well, the higher people are, the greater the fall, right? I mean, like, if someone has a meteoric rise of any sort of celebrity or something, most of them at some point have some fantastic yeah. fall that, like, kind of comes with it. And yeah. so there are the people that can sort of ride it, but those are the people, like, I think of someone, if I'm thinking of celebrities, like Tom Hanks. He's one of those, like, rare people that, like, is ubiquitous, known for his talent, but, like, somehow manages to be huge, but not in a way where I've never seen, like, a huge fall. I think fall. he realizes, or at least his public persona realizes, uh, that his job is his job, mm-hmm. and that's not his life. Right. Uh, which is, I think, the, the weird ambiguity that you get with social media influencers and people yes. who are famous without having a skill set to match it up, because then your personality is what's making your you famous. Your job is being famous. Yeah. Which is unsustainable. Unsustainable. Yeah. Because I people's even, likes are fleeting. Yeah. I don't even... I, even if it is sustainable and, like, financially you can um, be a social media influencer... I mean, how could you spend that much time on your phone for the rest of your life? Oh. Like, that... Well, that's the trick, is that they have... Photographers following them around. Yeah. And I'm not saying uh, about, like, <laughs> people who use, like, who like marketing, like, products, yeah. and, like, they yeah. just use that as a platform as they would have used commercials Someone 15 years ago. Well, no. So, she's she's selling herself. I'm, I'm saying that, like, if you use social media as a platform to sell your product, that is smart. That's, yeah. that's just smart. But I'm saying, like, I don't know how you could have your camera pointed on you. Right. Like Taylor. Like Taylor for the, for the rest of your life. Like, even if it is... Mm-hmm sustainable yeah. financially I'm just like no well, I mean at the same time some people have the same job for the rest of their life I mean you could also say like how could you stand in front of a courtroom every day for the rest of your or life stay in your cubicle. and people do do that so I mean I think it's actually the I also don't think that there's it's the narcissism that, I guess yeah, that I think there's anything that prepares thinking. you for the type of scrutiny that you get as an influencer as a public figure um that would make it unsustainable in my opinion like there's nothing that can prepare you to be hated well, and your uh, mental health. Because if you're getting so much from being loved, yes. the opposite of that would, again, lead you in an Ingrid situation. Like, I can't be hated by the, the thing that I want to, it's approval so much. And you're riding on people's likes. 
which can change yeah. at any time. So you're basically riding on your popularity. Yeah, you're a chameleon. And you have to be able to change and then being able to change so often and go along with it and then be okay with certain parts of yourself being lost yeah. in the meantime. I did love that moment where they basically made that guy at the car repair shop be their Instagram boyfriend. <laughs> that was, I was dying. Like, get down? On, on the ground. He's just like, I'm a, she's like, yeah, yeah, no, no, you're the best. But that's just like the behind the scenes of it. Like yeah. no one sees that. Like and who, who, like, who, who, who are taking these pictures of people by themselves? Like yeah. who does it? It's Why is it glamorous that she's, oh, we're basically getting our car repaired. And then that's a picture that you show and people are like, 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 wishing yeah. I was there. And it was just like a bullshit thing. They got into a car crash. But they're in Joshua Tree. But they're in Joshua Tree. <laughs> yeah. It did the social media, the commentary yeah. and the fact that this was a satire on social media and showing the behind the scenes of what's going on and then the pictures of it yeah. was so fascinating to me. Yeah. And it's also like, it makes so much sense why this is a, like a millennial, a millennial advent invention. Mm-hmm. Um, in that you don't know who you are, so you're so willing to take on these attributes as your own mm-hmm. um, and be that chameleon. And like this makes me think of like that. It's like a story called the ship of Theseus, and like this boat uh, uh, winds up in a museum, and each um, you know every year or so something falls off the boat and it's replaced by something new, mm-hmm. and eventually it's a brand new boat. But is it the same boat? Oh. <laughs> Have you heard that before? Mm, no, I like that. Yeah, we should read that. Asked by J.J. Abrams. I'm looking at the book right now, and I was like, oh my god, yeah, that's exactly what happens in that book. Um, Interesting, yeah. Another, yeah. another, uh, another recommendation. So uh, is it, yeah, but is it, are you yourself if you're taking on all of these attributes of social media influencers and, and things that are being put upon you? Like, are you of yourself? And like, as a millennial, as a young person, that you don't even know who self is and you're so it's what you think people want to see and then you continue putting out there what they want to see yeah and then what do you get when you're rejected you're like i've done everything i've done everything that you know I, a person can do to gain acceptance from this wider global that's what you use to make society and, and yourself like well then there's nothing like left. Did. yeah there's nothing left like the world doesn't have a place for me it was wild it was it was weird and then there's that part of me that really did like the life that Taylor was showing because I love <laughs> California and I loved her clothes and I liked the desert vibes and I want to go to Burning Man and I was like, oh God, I, I can feel that way too, even though I know that's not really it. There really, we didn't learn much about Taylor herself, hence her being the man yeah, pixie. Yeah. Um, but we did learn fr- from her husband that she was totally different than she used to be Mm -hmm. and probably uh, just kept growing based on her likes. And she called herself a photographer, which I thought was hilarious. Yeah. You do take pictures. What? I mean, yeah. And I was like, it's kind of insulting to photographers, but okay. Yeah. (laughs) People who've studied and used that as a craft, but you think that your iPhone picture picture is the same. She wouldn't say influencer. (laughs) Sometimes people just, you know, pay me and I put products and online and I take my picture yeah and her poses were so good she was just she did it like exactly how you see it it just I wonder how influencers feel about watching this movie or if it would even make them feel a certain way or they wouldn't care or find it funny I don't know I think that they should see the satire in it yeah uh yeah nothing about Taylor is anything that I envy I do want to go to Burning Man Mm -hmm. Um, Joshua Tree seems cool, but like her as an influencer, like I wouldn't follow her page. <laughs> no, I did love her house though, all that mid-century modern gorgeousness. Plus Boho, like, oh. yeah. Mm-hmm. I didn't envy her. I wouldn't want her life, but I, I, I liked the sh- the products that were involved. I was like, mm-hmm. I do like that. I like that bathroom. I do like that house. Oh yeah, that plant looks really good there. <laughs> oh, my life would change with this fifteen hundred dollar whatever thing that she had. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the, the, the other th- weird thing about um, Elizabeth Olsen's character is that she never turns it off. She's never not that, uh, she's always selling something. She's always, um, she's, she speaks very much in the affirmative. So, to, which would endear anyone to her. Like, and I love, I love the way that she was written for that, for that fact also, because like anyone would love to hang out with She's so positive, Olsen. affirming. Yeah, she yes, and everything that Ingrid said, and I was like, oh, I don't know if she's a comedian in her, 
in another life, but I was like, everything that Ingrid said, she's like, you're great. Everything about that's phenomenal. Yeah. Terrific. Like, she speaks like an Instagram post. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, it was the yeah. personification of an Instagram post. Mm-hmm. It was so well made. Yeah, which is the most perfect Manic Pixie Dream Girl. Yeah. She only validates you. All she does is validate. Yeah. But then imagine not being in that light. I'm like, the, the low. And of not being, like, directly... Which is what, um, which is what, oh my god, Ingrid started experiencing. You could see that, like, twitch and that thing in her eye when, yeah. like, the focus wasn't on her. Yeah, like, when Nikki comes in the picture, and I was like, I mean, Nikki was an asshole, but... And, or even the other influencer, just mm-hmm. anyone, and it was like, ooh. And then there was that moment where she heard... Well, that, yeah. Where she heard, um... Taylor say the exact same thing to the influencer and that was definitely telling and seeing you I knew I mean I knew anyways it was going to go down a dark path but that was when it was even clear to Ingrid that she wasn't special mm-hmm. that this was just a, an act and oof, yeah boy yeah and like when the person closest to you being her husband is saying that you're not the same person is the most telling and I was like she's changed Mm-hmm. And she's trying to change him. At least he's resisting. He still has a sense of who he is, and that he's trying. Yeah, and but his she seems bullshit to be art so big. Yeah, and it's kind of like I see you're resisting, but your art is basically an Instagram post. Too. Yeah, and not worth twelve hundred. That was so, so funny when they came enough. up with the amount. And but I mean, they knew she would. That was smart of them financially yeah. because she is a promoter. Yeah, Taylor's a promoter, so she's like, um. Yeah, that's going for around twelve hundred. It was brilliant. Yeah. Well, I think that, like, like I think that that draws so much parallels to like reality TV mm-hmm. and what they're un- unconsciously or consciously selling mm-hmm. uh, to people um, is a lifestyle, mm-hmm. uh, and that you shouldn't want to be in all these restaurants and going on trips and doing things that you obviously can't afford. What we do see with them though is the unhappiness yeah. sometimes, which is nice, and you don't see any of. Yeah. But I also think that, like, it takes a, a pretty healthy person to even see that they're unhappy. Yeah. Because it seems like they're at a party. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, and there's just drama because that's what happens at parties. Yeah. If you weren't in, you argue. Yeah, especially when you're placed together with a bunch of people that they know will incite each yeah. other. Yeah, because how much of, like, I don't know, I feel like when I watch reality TV more, like, more of their actions became my actions. Because it, like, in my head was, like, becoming all right to act that way. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, I can't do that. I can't do this. Uh, they have, you know, machines behind them that will protect them. Mm-hmm. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> Society will shun me. Uh, uh, they would. Yelling at people. And... <laughs> I like to. Okay, so Ingrid ingratiates herself by stealing the dog and Love getting that. That is a plot that I would do 100%. the family. Or the family get like basically stealing the dog and then returning the dog um, of Taylor's and then their friends and they spend all night hanging out and she buys a twelve hundred dollar piece of art mm-hmm. and that's that's it patron patron of the arts patron of the arts yeah I loved it I loved it I love that um, her stealing the dog is so reminiscent of Seven Psychopaths and yeah. I have to watch that. I love that movie. It was hilarious. Um, and Christopher Walken's there, so it's not to like. Ooh, love him. <laughs> but then her, so her brother then picks up on, and I, I do, I like these kinds of characters that come in, they're untrustworthy. It's because they're shitty. Because they're shitty. Yeah. And, but they can pick up on someone's shittiness. Yeah. And so he sees right through it from, I mean, from the get. He's giving her looks. The way he takes a picture when he first sees her. I was like, oh boy, he's going to do some facial recognition kind of thing, like catfish style, trying mm-hmm. to figure out who the fuck she is, and and he does, and then he blackmails her, and so shitty meets shitty, and then yeah. it all gets even shittier. <laughs> yeah, but I was just like, oh my god, Nikki is so much like his sister in that he's willing to sell his sister for money, and I'm like, come on, Nikki, get it together, you're supposed to be like... I know. You know, saving her and doing it for an altruistic reason because she's your sister. I know. But it's no, it's to fund his lifestyle. That was uh, super sad. The only reason he ended up telling anyone that they... So basically, Nikki, long story short, finds out um, about Ingrid and how she's obsessed, steals her phone, uh, sees everything, takes pictures of all the pictures and, and evidence of her obsession and her plan mm-hmm. uh, to basically be friends with his sister. And then she... 
Um, then he says, I will loan you your phone back for five grand a month. So they make a time to meet up so that they can um, exchange the money. And Ingrid pays someone to punch her in the face and make it look like the brother beat her up. So then she talks her boyfriend into kidnapping him. And da 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 they end up leaving him in the desert, making him feel like he was going to be killed. But he seemed to know what was going on. And it seemed like the only reason he told his sister what was going on is because he was kind of left that way. I don't know. For some reason, he, he admitted to the blackmail and whatever. I think it was just he didn't care at that point and wanted her in trouble or something. I don't know. I don't well, know. that was like a trump card. Like, there's nothing else that he can do to her because he beat up the boyfriend. So he was getting back. That was the only way he could get back at her is by admitting. Yeah. His, well, they were like, you know, it's like checkmate. It's like, okay, well, we either done playing or we flip the board. But yeah. And he flipped the board, which is a respectable move. Uh, something I would have done. Yeah, it, yeah, totally. But it is weird that she finds out her brother was willing to do that. Which but, seems to have no effect on her. Which she's just... And by the way, wasn't their sort of interaction kind of flirtatious? I was like, do you always touch your brother that much? Like, when they were... <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, all like, give me a phone, tickle, tickle. I was just like, my goodness, you guys. Like, it was just, like, so touchy. And then it was like... Yeah, it wasn't, I didn't think they were into each other, but I was sort of like, my God, the amount of the physical, the physical excitement with each I think, other. I think they are mirror images, and they are that obsessed, obsessed with themselves, uh, that it's just like... Kind of ping pong. It's just, showing, it's just showing how obsessed they are with that image. I mean, like, he looked like her. He was into his image just as much as she was, so I think it was just... Yeah, yeah. and they yeah. were, like, weirdly competing with each other, because when he, like, says he met the... Instagram influencer with a million followers. Yeah. Her whole like demeanor changed. She uh, it. I think that's like a weird thing that like our generation is like expected to be both people and businesses. Mm-hmm. Like I hate when people talk to me about branding, about like personal branding, and I was like, I am not a business. I do not want to operate as if I'm a business. I'm a person. It should mean more than I'm a person and not a brand. Yeah, and it doesn't because it more doesn't. people will follow your business as long as they like your brand. Yeah, and it's just like giving people more means to exploit each other and do shitty things and say, it's just business. It's just business. I fucking hate that. Okay, so (laughs) she basically declined. Let's, what did you think of the end? Her full decline, her high high, her low low, what happened at the end? Um, So she pretty much buys a house next door that uh, Elizabeth Olsen and her husband wanted to use as their boutique hotel uh, with a stupid name. In J-Tree. In J-Tree. Desert door. Yeah. And so she's pretty much unraveling. Um, she's spent all of her last of the $50,000, which, I mean, actually, she's, like, doing pretty good. She, like, dumped out that bag that she was carrying all of her cash, and she's like, this is $50,000. And I was like, you only spent $10,000 this whole time? Yeah, but was it a week? <laughs> oh, that's true. I mean, how long did this all thing take? It was unclear because it's California weather. There are no seasons to base it on, but it seemed very short to me. Yeah, it seemed like over. I thought it was like over the course of the summer, and yeah. then the movie ends at Halloween. But then um, again, there yeah, it's every it's day is sunny. Yeah, who knows? I, I mean, it could have been five days. It could have been five months. <laughs> but I don't think she'd be able to keep it. I guess I thought it was shorter because I didn't think she'd be able to keep it together. Like someone would find her out within a period of time. She really wasn't uh, that. Yeah, good. I mean, she wasn't. Yeah, she wasn't that great. She liar. just, um, she did get found out. Yeah. Right. But yeah. like how long would it take? Yeah. Yeah. But well, thank God for Nikki. I'm assuming she's been doing this her whole life. And yeah. Why is she so bad at it? Yeah. I, you know, <laughs> is she, is she, she is so bad at it, but she picks people that don't care. They don't, they're so into themselves. They don't notice it. Like I would notice the hairs on the back of my neck go up with certain human beings in my life and if I would and they didn't come up for you Tessa so don't worry if I I notice if someone is um I I feel it Mm -hmm. and I have before and so I I don't know man interesting Mm -hmm. yeah I think I have like a I mean not a such a cool superpower like you but (laughs) no that's I read somewhere that that is kind of the feeling a lot of people will get when they encounter like a true um psychopath or a true sociopath is uh, like on a primitive sense, it's just you know like that fight or flight, like yeah. saber tooth tiger sort of thing, where you're just like, Shh. yeah. I can tell that I don't 
Yeah, I don't know that I straight up know any psychopaths. A couple narcissists. Mm -hmm. um, I see you. I see that your motivating interest is you. Mm -hmm. I recommend uh, a football field's length for narcissists. <laughs> Uh, just because I know if it's ever a choice between me and anything else that interests you, you choose you. And I'm like, I don't know that I can be truly, truly friends with that, but okay. It doesn't make you a terrible person. I just, mm -hmm. I know where I stand. The one person that I truly have felt uneasy around was actually a child that I was watching. Yeah. When, yeah, well, they're all the narcissists. It was... But it was more <laughs> totally true. They're basically supposed to be that way. Yeah. But it was no. It was like a like a lower level of like this could be fear if this person were bigger and more. Um, and I I felt it right away. I would often tell my mom because I lived with her at the time when I'd come home. Um, and you know, hashtag God bless. <laughs> Ooh. Hashtag children. Hashtag, Hashtag child's play. Hashtag <laughs> life. Hashtag child's Hashtag play. Hashtag insidious. Hashtag. <laughs> Speaking of, we've got to do, we need to talk about Kevin. Oh, yeah. Because that does, I do believe that that kind of stuff can be um, apparent in, in children as well. I didn't think I was truly going to be hurt. It was just a feeling like I was, I was um, interacting with someone who was on a different I a different playing field yeah. than I was. The most California thing about me is that I do think that people vibrate on, some people just vibrate at a lower level. Mm -hmm. And that is something that can be changed. Mm -hmm. um, that you can affect, like, it's like meditating. like. But some people just vibrate, like, a, there's like a base level, and some people are below it. Like, you just... Wait, do you want to be lower? No, you want to be higher. Oh, okay. Higher, um, more positive vibrations. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I... Is that just another like, way of calling someone, like, a downer? Or yeah, is it, uh, yeah, like someone who sucks energy, but I think like someone who like who I would think is like vibrating at a low. Do you level. watch what we do in the shadows? Is that the vampire? Yeah, they have one that's <laughs> called an en an energy vampire, and he sucks people's energy yes. by vibrating yeah. at a low level and boring the shit out of people. Not yeah. exactly the same. Psychologists thing. Yeah. talk about that too, though. Energy vampires. Yeah, but I think oh really? People who oh. Um, vampires are real. <laughs> yeah, like Probably. the person who you walk away with, and every time you walk away with, you're like. Oh, I'm so exhausted from like whatever. I don't even know what just happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so basically, when she is losing her shit um, and she's found out, she then decides to quote unquote be real with everyone on Instagram and tapes herself giving one, you know, monologue. One final goodbye. And uh, takes some pills on, like, records it and then lays uh, in a bed of candles. To kill herself. And the shrine to herself. Which is kind of like, I couldn't help but think, are you just going to burn his apartment down? This poor guy isn't even there to watch his place anymore. You just shit on him and he can She's in Joshua Tree. She's in Joshua Tree. <gasps> She's in yeah. Joshua Tree. Yeah. Okay. Are you going to burn this house down? Maybe. And maybe she doesn't care. Yeah. But then she gets woken up by her boyfriend, Danny Pinto, or Pinto or whatever. Daniel Pinto. Who's amazing. And he is so kind to her, and then he's like, I know what will cheer you up, gives her her phone. And yes, that's true, but it, it's kind of, I'm left with a bit of an uneasy feeling when she does perk up because her suicide video goes viral, but then that's positive reinforcement for a suicide video. Even if it is, please don't do that. Yeah. It's, it, it reinforces the type of attention you will get when doing it. So I guess I... I implore the two of you, do you think this is going to change Ingrid for the better, or do you think that she's just going to feed off of those likes and become a different sort of animal? Uh, no, I think that every, um, every Ingrid needs a codependent, and that is who Danny is to her. And so... Part of him helping her, I think, it might be feeding into like his own cycle of like I need to be needed, and then like why else wouldn't he drop her? You're like seeming like a normalish person, uh, but you're attracted to the most broken girl on the block. Not to say she can't be, yeah. she can't help herself, but I'm like, 
What about this is attractive to you? She caused eight thousand dollars worth of damage. Almost got you killed. I mean, that's uh, that's <laughs> literally every episode of my crazy ex girlfriend. Yeah, I mean, yeah. she has three guys going after her, mm-hmm. and she's hemorrhaging money. She's losing her job. Yeah, she's yeah. getting in trouble with the law. Like every day, there's a problem, and she's got choices. <laughs> yeah, she's got more choices than a lot of people who have their shit together. So, mm-hmm. what does that say? Yeah. Um. People like a project, maybe. Or he just, maybe, I mean, she seems like she, well, she doesn't even really. She sounds so uninteresting, like, I'm like, kind of like turning, let's turn our lens towards Dan. Daniel. Uh, Daniel Pinto. But I'm like, yeah, he, to me, seems very codependent for no reason. Um, At first I was like, oh, he's just a crush, she's a new girl. Yeah. Uh, But he lets her walk all over him. Yeah, and then I was like, and then he gives a piece of his backstory that he's an orphan, his parents died in a... Mm-hmm. Car accident. I know he was so nice. And I was sort of like, "What's that sativa even in this entire movie?" And I love that he didn't let her have dogs. Yeah, I don't know. I I liked him, but She's yeah, willing to go along with her crazy scheme at the pool party, wild, uh, where you can't talk about Batman, and and he goes along with the kidnapping scheme. Yeah, and I'm like, again, where are your red flags in that? <laughs> maybe he just Dan. says yes to everything. Yeah, but I was like, how? Those people. Yeah, but I'm like, maybe that's you know coming from his childhood as an orphan and maybe mm-hmm. feeling unwanted, or maybe he was just a plot device. I mean, who knows? Yeah. Well, he definitely was. Yeah. Somebody yeah. had to go with her dad. She's yeah. not intimidating at all. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Although she could have hired that group of boys to uh, kidnap what's his face. That was a great scene where she gets punched. That's not a lot, but those kids were young. I would punch someone for way less than that. I would not. (laughs) Yeah. Interesting. You don't seem to be... Yeah, Yeah. why not? (laughs) She's Uh, asking me to. I don't know what she's doing. I don't know. She's just like me an accomplice. I don't like this with I don't think I've... I like watching it. I mean... (laughs) I've never punched anyone, so would she get the desired effect? Probably not. But that's her own risk. Yeah, um, I don't, but I just think that that was a kind of a pricey punch, like $200 for one swift punch? You could have hackled a little bit. Yeah. yeah. They're teens, what do they need money for? I don't know what to say. <laughs> I assume they also live in West Hollywood, so I was like, your parents are doing pretty well, most likely. Yeah, it just seemed like a low, a low price to me for potentially having someone call the cops on you and turning it all around on you and stuff. She's like got that. three witnesses. I don't, I don't know if that's on. I, Do you not trust uh, three white males on the stand? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. In this episode of Law and Order. Uh, no, I don't. Do buy, I, thought she buy got, I thought she got an easy. Okay, so how about um, Taylor's? So, Taylor's character. So, we talked about her being the manic pixie dream girl. Do we think that she has, I mean, she she does sort of seem to have a reason for being in the movie and in Ingrid's life and then disappears. Uh, but she's not really teaching Ingrid a lesson about life. She seems to just be feeding mm-hmm. something that Ingrid is looking for and then disappears. Yeah. I mean, so kind of the same thing, but like, there's really no. But I would argue that no manic pixie dream girl teaches a male character anything. Hmm. I thought I the definition it. was that they teach them about to embrace life and the mysteries of life. At least that's the point, technically, of them. But it ends up being kind of shallow. Yeah, I was. I kind of read it as in, well, them embracing the manic pixie dream girl in any respect is them embracing life, is making a different choice. Mm. She's not embracing anything. Being she's just minute. doing things that the other girl yeah. does. Yeah. But I do think that this is a more realistic version of how a manic pixie dream girl scenario would work in the real world. And that, like, yeah, hopefully you aren't just, like, finding girls who are, like, eclectic and kooky and, like, have doe eyes. Yeah. <laughs> um, to guide you around life and then <laughs> dropping them immediately. <laughs> yeah. Like, hopefully that's not how it's going. But this might be, like... a it's slightly updated, you know. Millennial. Single Mill- white female. Single white female. Like, Ish. if a manic pixie dream girl exists, she'd be the social media representation of, like... I feel like this is why, like, like cam porn is so popular also. It's, like... What porn? Like, camera... Like, when people, oh, like, do, like, like, amateur porn? Yeah. Like, I think they're called cam girls. I don't know. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. And, yeah, those girls. <laughs> those are, like, in on the... Like, 
manic pixie dream girls that you're choosing to share with however many other people are watching this. Uh, because she's only doing what she, you want her to do. and like, <laughs> She's only here serving the purpose, which is to create an emotion within you. Well, isn't that just... An excitement within you. Any woman in porn? I feel like Cam is like a more personal experience, like where you can at least imagine that this is only happening to me. Oh, got it. Or is it, it's a regular porn. There's obviously a dude. This is like, not hey, happening to you. Hey, good boy. Yeah. <laughs> well, she's like talking to you. Hey, uh, good boy. And that's to me like a manic pixie dream experience that you can pay for. <laughs> MPDG porn. <gasps> Done. <laughs> Actually, we should. There should be a whole category that has like Elizabeth Town ish and and. 500 Days of Summer-ish girls. But isn't that what it is? I mean, I've never, I've never paid. I mean, with a little the dress bit. and, the, like, the whole... Really? In camp porn, they have... I thought they start out with sexy clothes. They have, like, a polka dot dress on. Oh, I'm sure they... I don't know. <laughs> let's watch one. Let's, let's watch one for, for research for purposes. Research. I'm not paying for that. You have to pay? Yeah. So oh. they'll do what you want. Oh, that makes sense. What about those weird... Um, I've never played this game, but it... it it's a function on the on, on the interwebs where the camera just goes to different people, so you enter a room. Oh, chat roulette! Yeah, holy shit, that looks wildly dangerous. Yeah, to me. I feel like I did it once in college oh, with my a group of girls. God, and then, yeah, it was a one time thing. Just like, like hey, oh, this was a mistake. Because yeah. like, you're not just gonna get someone. Hi, I'm Sam and Sam from London. Hello, nice to meet you. you get that would be the worst case scenario if you just got somebody who's exactly you on the other end. You'd be like, what the fuck? What did I just <laughs> get your mom? Yeah. <laughs> hey, mom. Oh, wow. Okay, let's talk later. Yeah, I think the whole point is to like drop in and be a voyeur on someone else's weird life, not like ordinary shit. Like, <laughs> oh, I guess I just, I feared just someone's big, ugly penis and I just did not want, yeah. <laughs> want to participate. Yeah. I think that's where my fear of the dark web started. I was like, I don't think this is going to end well. You got lucky this time, ladies. It doesn't. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, my fear of the dark web is just legit. Yeah, it's scary. I always stop saying it. And then I have, like, the Google alert from And saying. you're throwing that out. You're throwing that vibration out there. That the dark web will find me? Yeah, this is dark web vibration. I mean, that's why I'm super afraid of 5G. People can find you wherever the fuck you are. I don't like it. Campaign for... I do not want 5G. So that is a weird thing about this also is how she, the scary thing about Instagram and social media is basically, it's just a tracking device. And with that whole Kim Kardashian thing, I like her getting robbed. Oh. Um, what, I don't know where she was. Was she Germany? Paris. Or Paris. And it was like, it was so scary and sad, but also shocking that it hadn't happened yet in terms yeah. of the amount of like flaunting your wealth and that you're in this actual hotel, and this is where I'm at, and you don't even need to fully be tracking. You can just put your location, and with your pictures, and you, I mean, it's so easy for people to find people that I'm just kind of like, that's really scary. And she only stayed off yeah. for a little while, and then it was back to well, business. Well, that's her job. If your job is, uh... dude, she was tied up in a bathtub. I mean, that should that seems traumatizing. Yeah, I always thought the like public response was the most disgusting um how um unfeeling people um wrote about it and spoke about it like it was her fault yeah well that like you know like treating her as if she's not a human and i think that yeah. that is the mm -hmm. like oh jesus she doesn't need publicity that much to do something like no that. she doesn't need any of this she could frankly stop doing what she's doing which is why it's forever. like also like puzzling and like i would love to be kim kardashian's therapist uh, for this reason, just to find out what mo mo what at this point motivates her to keep doing this now that she has three kids. Because mm -hmm. I was like, you've got three little targets out there. Yeah. And I was like, how do you function as a parent, uh, a celebrity parent? Like, I do not envy them that task. It seems um, dangerous because, okay, don't show their faces on Instagram. But, but that's, they not, exist. that's not There's only anything. so many schools in Calabasas. There's, yeah. a, there's only, unless you're getting the home tutored, and then there's, you know, people probably come in and out, in and out of that house. All the time. And you and hear about stalkers. And, like yes, Taylor stalkers. Stalkers. has had a number of them. I mean, it's just... Mm -hmm. And like Drake's had his house broken into by that, like, that, um... There's a movie called, like, Bling Spring Ring. Break, yeah, Bling Ring. Yeah, and I was like, Amazing. those type people who just... No self-awareness, no caution, like, no... They don't think that you're human anymore. And I'm like, is that... Yeah. I think that's, like, starts out with you becoming a brand, and then as 
the more you become a brand, the less you become a person. And people are looking up to you, and then they look up to you to the extent where then they're obsessed with you, and you are no longer human. You're doing something else for them. I mean, Lennon being shot by a huge fan, mm -hmm. you know, or Selena being killed by the president of her, I know, RIP, her fan club. It's just like mm -hmm. that, that line between love and hate and obsession, and then you must be ended, and that kind of thing. It all played out in, in this as well. Mm -hmm. It was it was fascinating. I, but, it, oh, my God, like it. Taylor's character, though, the way you pointed out also, she basically is speaking like an Instagram post. That just, that kind of wowed me because it would be so fun to go and have drinks and dinner with her and her husband with the yeah. name that I love, Ezra, and just kind of hang and be told that everything I was doing was fabulous and then just like bouncing off of that. It's like the high you yeah. get from likes. You're basically getting real like IRL likes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's just why it's fascinating. Her, yeah. And her character's like, you know, Apex when she's yelling at Ingrid at the Halloween party, she's like, we're not friends. You don't know me and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, accurate. Yeah. And like the fact that Ingrid isn't picking up on any of that. Yeah. Um, it shows like both the callous nature of um, Elizabeth Olsen, but also like how unaware yeah. um, and unreflective Ingrid is. And I'm like, uh, and then, I'm sorry like, guys, sorry guys, back to the party. Like then, boom, right. right and I love that she share. I was like, oh, this, this, oh, they just get it. They fucking get it. It was um, shares like the original like social yeah. media, like <laughs> yeah. yeah, or like socialite. Um, so what would you give this movie? What's a good rating scale for this? Oh, um, before we do ratings, is there any social media follower or people you follow who you could see yourself be Ingrid for? Someone who's not like a real celebrity, not like an actor or a person. I don't follow influencers. I guess the only ones are probably like reality TV stars that I just like, like whatever they were in the show or thought they were funny, but I don't, I don't even know any. Oh. Yeah. I follow like some interior designers. But I don't like, I'm not trying to show up at their house. Who is still their dog? No, I've, I've followed a few influencer, influencers, like people I don't know. And they probably live in LA and like, I like their clothes and I unfollow them. I'm like, I'm not getting anything out of this relationship. I to start following after this podcast just as a function of <laughs> getting more followers, but there's none that I actually look at. <laughs> well, that's you? the like, that's the, the game is that like when you follow right. an influencer, you don't get followers out. They get followers. Yeah, I started <laughs> recognizing yeah. that. I thought it was helping me, and I don't know what any other profiles look like. Um, I follow a few makeup people, um, but also people who, it's mostly people who I watch on YouTube, and I'm like, yeah, I, look, I just want to know what you're doing in makeup. And uh, I'm following fashion people and actors. Well, wait, so how so many, good. okay, how many, um, how many likes? How many likes, how many hashtag blessed, how many, what do you give this movie? It was so good. It was so good. It was so good. Um, I could only give it four out of five, um, four to five likes. There are some things I would change, mm -hmm. mostly in regards to diversity. Why was there only one black person in, so in Southern California? <laughs> Anywhere. Yeah. yeah. I understand Joshua Tree. And I have to say, I didn't <laughs> pick this movie. <laughs> Just in, because of how Aubrey plays on her look, she's a dark Oh. Man. Pale skin, I just had to make it known that I did not pick this movie. I don't think the, I mean, yeah, physically similar, but like in terms of personality, I don't think it was. Just but it wasn't <laughs> all personality of what we were talking about yeah. in that episode. I just needed it to be out there. It was Tessa's pick. Everyone just remember that. Thank you. Okay. Another win for me. <laughs> Hashtag SFL privilege. <laughs> um, okay, so four out of five? Four out of five. Yeah, certainly a lack of diversity. I expected it with this movie and what it was about and just it, I don't know. It, I, I was, I didn't like that, but I fully expected it. I would give it, it was so good and so funny and the music was so awesome um, and the acting and everything was so great. And the satire, I'd give it four and a half out of five. And it was tight. 90 minutes, oh. everything led to another. It was perfect the way it started. It was perfect the way it ended. It was it was such a good, good, good movie. Yeah. Four and a half out of five uh, likes. What about you, Helen? I would give it, honestly, five out of five. Yeah. I was, like, entertained within 
one minute. Yeah. I texted, I texted <laughs> Tessa. I was like, because she maced her within nine, within 90 seconds. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I think I actually texted you before that. And I was like, this you movie. Like, oh. Yeah. Uh, obviously, I wish there was more diversity. And I don't think they were being like, this is the world. Of course, it's not diverse for these people. I don't think they even considered it. Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't, don't think it was a consideration. Because it casting. made sure, I mean, like. Yeah. But Puerto Rican, but. Yeah. But, but yeah, even, there weren't even background characters, you know, yeah. um, at like pool parties or so. Yeah. It did kind of seem like, um, why can't I ever remember their names? Taylor would not likely have a lot of diversity in her life. Honestly, it didn't seem like she had that many friends. Yeah. I think she, yeah. she's friends in her, with her phone. Mm hmm um, but they did Harlow Chung or whatever, which was like, oh my god. But well, she was an interesting character, also. Yeah, I didn't particularly care for her. I don't think you're think supposed to, though. Yeah, you like, were oh, supposed to, for sure. You are. Oh. All right. Yeah. yeah, that's it. That's the movie, guys. Yeah. Oh, I do want to say, like, if you really liked, uh, if you really like Ingrid Goes West, you need to watch The Little Hours. Also, Aubrey Plaza, similar movie, but just like kind of you know taking the piss out of religion in, in kind of similar ways. It's amazing. It, was this written Ingrid Goes West written by her boyfriend? Because uh, uh, the Little Hours was. I think he. I think he co-wrote it. There was okay. another. There was another name in the credit. I wonder if he's one of them. Wow, that's really funny. To cast your girlfriend in such a hilarious role. Yeah. But apparently, she had some like um, the way it's written and the way she played it isn't exactly the same. So it's like. It's happy that she got to put her own mm -hmm. spin on the movie. Aubrey, um, if you like us, <laughs> our lives will change, and maybe we will ingrid you. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. If you are also a fan of Aubrey Plaza, she's at Evil Hag on Twitter, and you should tag her and tag us, mm -hmm. and eventually a conversation will start, which will be Denise stealing her dog, mm -hmm. and then we'll become best friends, we'll do like a meet at the Joshua Tree, maybe yeah. Big Bear to make it different. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, we'll just go out in a blaze of glory. Perfect. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited to be a part of that. You can I be a part of that plot? Yeah. Okay. I'm sure she has more than one animal. Yeah. I'd like to. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'd like to be included. You know how I like to be on the periphery of chaos and psychosis? <laughs> I would love that. All right, guys, you can follow us on Instagram at strongfemalepod. Yeah, and we're on Twitter at SFL underscore Chicago. And uh, that's it for now. That's all, folks. Bye-bye.